afternoon, everybody. It is Thursday afternoon. This is a quick recap of what's been happening in the Midwest here over the past couple of days. We had a storm system of a barometric pressure averaging 29.3 over no- just north of northern Minnesota on Tuesday. That storm system strengthened as it moved northeast into the Hudson Bay, deepening to 29.2, and eventually forecasts indicated that it would be deepening to 29.1. A st- Strong cold front associated with the system with Arctic high pressure behind it moved through Illinois on Tuesday, and that front stalled. It became stationary. Amazingly, the thing became stationary, kind of like what happens a lot of times in the summertime. In the summertime, these fronts become stationary just north of St. Louis. This thing became stationary much further south than St. Louis. It went all the way down into Arkansas. In fact, right now, the front... It's a slow, it's still slowly moving. It's a stationary front. It goes from northern New England. This line I'm actually reading right now, I'm reading this from the National Weather Service website. The front stretches from northern New England southwestward, just south of the lower Great Lakes and into the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley and lower Mississippi Valley and into the western Gulf of Mexico. End of what I am reading right now. Uh, we have the We have two waves of low pressure that went across this front. Uh, We have the first wave, which was very well forecasted, and in its bullseye, as usual, here in the Midwest, to simplify things, I love the AccuWeather maps that every single time there's a storm, they have three categories, sometimes four, but it goes one to three inches is the lower one, then it goes three to six, then six to 12. Usually six to 12 is the main bullseye. There might be a little tiny area that is in the 12 to 18 inch, and then when you get into the nor'easter type of storms, you can get up to the 18 to 24 inches, maybe even more. So we have two waves of low pressure. Each one was forecasted to have 6 to 12 inches at its bullseye, more or less. And the first wave of low pressure was very well forecasted, and it happened. And there was a sharp cutoff on the northern edge, just like was forecasted to happen. In fact, some areas got a little bit more than 12 inches, up to 13.5. I think there was even a city that got 14.5. But the Chicago area generally was to the south of Chicago. From the first wave of low pressure, the O'Hare Airport, the official recording station, received 5.6 inches. Now, that wave of low pressure moved through. It was very well forecasted for Illinois. When we get into Indiana, there were some issues on the southeastern parts of the county warning area of northern Indiana because the precipitation took much longer to change over to snow. It remained rain for a much longer period of time than what was forecasted. Much of Indiana, though, the forecast was right on track. But when you go into the southern parts, that's when the snowfall totals were much less than what was forecasted, much less. But for most of Indiana, you get the bullseye. You have, again, 6 to 12 inches. Uh, You have a couple counties, again, they got 13 to 14 inches. Now, we say goodbye to wave number one comes wave number two, and that's happening today. This wave number two is going further south, significantly further south. It's taking a storm track further south than what was originally forecasted, and it continues to take a storm track further south. In fact, South Bend, Indiana, which originally, the original thinking was that not only was South Bend going to be in the bullseye for wave number one, South Bend, Indiana was even going to be in the bullseye for wave number two. That means the original forecast would show that South Bend would be getting 12 to 24 inches. That was the original forecast. Okay, then things gradually changed in regards to wave number two. South Bend was no longer in the 6 to 12 inch range. It will be in the 3 to 6 inch range. Okay, then as the storm continued to track, take a more southern track, South Bend now in the 1 to 3 inch range. Well, right now it's in the 0 inch range. South Bend is completely out of it right now completely out of it, uh, perhaps trace amounts of snow for today. However, if you look further down in Indiana, you look on the map to go into central Indiana, 7 to 10 inches is forecasted for some of those, uh, the higher amounts right now. We have 7 to 10 inches. Uh, These are places such as uh, uh, Bluffton, 
Bluffton, Indiana, but that's six to eight inches. Portland, seven to ten inches. And in general, it's in a shaded area on some of the weather maps of eight to twelve inches. This would qualify as being in the bullseye of six to twelve inches. We still have that going through. Now, I was thinking earlier today that perhaps the complications of the precipitation type may have uh, totally destroyed the 6 to 12 inch bullseye. That's a possibility. It could be that the precipitation in the peak of the storm over here is falling as sleet or freezing rain and not as snow. But it looks like it is falling as snow and another 6 to 12 inches for today. Wave number 2, 6 to 12 inches is what is forecasted in the bullseye. The question is... Are there any cities which are in the bullseye, have been in the bullseye, for both wave number one and wave number two? That's the question that I am trying to figure out over here. Originally, there was forecasted to be many cities. Then it gradually became less and less. So the question remains, are there any cities which have been in the bullseye for both storms, in which case we should be seeing some counties getting 20-inch totals? And as of now, it doesn't look like that. It seems like, generally speaking, and perhaps completely, the cities which were in the bullseye for storm number one are not in the bullseye for storm number two. In fact, many of those cities are completely missing storm number two. In a certain way, this is all part of one storm system. So it's really two waves of low pressure that moved along a front I really think the stronger wave of low pressure is today. The reason I think that is because when you look on these computer models, the truth of the matter is it was very difficult to find wave low pressure wave number one to an untrained eye. It was very difficult to find and maybe even to a trained eye. You know, you have what is clear is that there was an area of low pressure of 29.7, 29.8 in the Texas area, and it kind of moved up northeast along the front. But the main low pressure seemed to stay in Texas. Now, today on that map, you see that the area of low pressure in the Texas area actually does make it to the east coast today so it's still a little bit hard to find the thing moving on even today's it doesn't seem like either one of these storms was really a storm none of these were really like an organized well-defined storm system we have a front with waves of low pressure moving along the front and because of the enormous amounts of gulf moisture which is feeding into this uh into this event, we have really heavy, some really heavy snow that fell. In fact, snowfall fell at the rates of one to two inches an hour Wednesday morning, and we are continuing to see heavy snowfall rates this afternoon in areas much further south than what was forecasted. I think the main impact, though, the most severe impact and dangerous impact of this storm is today's storm, and it is an ice storm. We have ice storm warnings in effect all over the place from areas even in the deep south going all the way into Arkansas. We also have uh, ice storm warnings going all along the front and then also winter storm warnings, and you could basically drive from... West Texas, the Washington Post pointed this out. You could drive from West Texas all the way to Maine, and you will be under a winter storm warning for the entire drive. That's This is a very impactful storm, a really impactful storm. Now, I would like to read some of these snow totals. That This comes from the National Weather Service. And this is from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesday, February 1st through 8 a.m. today. So let me just read you the top, the top totals from various states. Arkansas, Bella Vista, three miles northwest of Bella Vista. That's where the, re- the recording station is. They got nine inches of snow. That's in Arkansas. Colorado, Fort Garland, 13.3 miles east of Fort Garland got 22.4 inches of snow. It looks like that is the top amount. I'm just going to tell you six miles northeast of Denver, that's considered Denver. They got 13.6 inches of snow. Into Illinois, the top amount was Macomb. The Macomb, that county where the recording station is one mile southeast of Macomb, 14.5 inches. Also, Lewistown in Illinois, 14.4 inches. Peoria, Illinois, 
The recording station is three miles northwest of Peoria, 12.1 inches, Bloomington, Illinois. The weather station there is 2.7 miles northeast of Bloomington. They got 12 inches, Canton, 12 inches. Uh, another station in Peoria, another Peoria, one mile north of Peoria, 12 inches, Quincy, one mile west of Quincy, 11.5 inches. I know I said one city per state, but we, we have to put Illinois. I mean, this is Illinois. I mean, Vermont, Illinois, 11.3. Midway Airport, 11.0 inches, 11 inches. Normal, Illinois, also 11 inches. And the Chicago Romeoville National Weather Service office, 10 inches. All right, now we go into Indiana. Cedar Lake, Indiana, 12.5 inches. The same for Mishawaka. Mishawaka, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. They also got 12.5 inches. Uh, Akron, 12.0. Rolling Prairie, 12.0. Loganport, 11. Michigan City, 11. Morocco, 11. Wallen, 11. South Bend, Indiana. The recording station is two miles east of South Bend. They got 10.3 as of early this morning. And really, there's not much more expected for today. In fact, the National Weather Service is saying just a trace. You go into Iowa. The highest amount in Iowa was Motor, M-O-D-A-R, one mile south-southwest of that city, five inches. Kansas, the highest amount was Climax. Climax, Kansas, nine inches. You go into uh, Topeka, Kansas, 4.6. Michigan, St. Joseph, Michigan, 13.8 inches. And... Go into uh, Missouri, New London, Missouri, 12.2 inches. Hannibal, 11.5 inches. Columbia, Missouri, reporting station six miles southeast of Columbia, 9.7. Springfield, Missouri, 7 inches. St. Louis, 6.5. Kansas City, 3.8. New Mexico got bombarded with snow. Cannon Plaza, 21 inches. Tahoski Valley, 20 inches. And Santa Fe, 3.5 inches. The uh, weather station there is 2.7 miles east-northeast. In Ohio so far, Ohio is much further east, so you know, we're probably still waiting for further uh, snow totals over there. But so far, as of this morning, Montpelier, Ohio, 6.5 inches. And uh, similar amounts for the other cities in Ohio mentioned. Oklahoma, highest amount, 6.2 inches in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Pennsylvania so far, you know, there's not much there yet. Uh, there probably will be a lot more. Erie, Pennsylvania, 2.7 inches. Texas, Turpin, Texas, 8, eight inches. Beaver, 6 inches. Groover, 6 inches. Fritch, 5.5. Amarillo, Texas, that's my favorite city. So three miles north of Amarillo, Texas, 5.1 inches. Uh, going into Wyoming, Cheyenne, Wyoming, 7 inches. And... Uh, and here we have selected preliminary. Oh, so all of those, all of those amounts that have. Um, uh, so one second here. Selected preliminary storm total snowfall in inches. Selected preliminary. Okay, uh, continuing again. This is. I don't know what the. Okay, I don't know what the difference. Oh, total sleet. This is the sleet accumulations. Arkansas, Otter Creek, 2 inches. Illinois, Carbondale, 1.8 inches. Kentucky and Henderson, a tenth of an inch. Missouri, Shrewsbury, 1 inch. Oklahoma, Sup, Soper, 0.8 inches. Texas, Sweetwater, 1.5. This is of the sleet. Okay, now we go to freezing rain. This is the real dangerous stuff. Mulberry, Arkansas, a half an inch along with Pine Bluff. And then you have other areas that got a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch of ice or more is considered winter storm warning criteria. In Illinois, you have three-tenths of an inch for Altamont, Illinois. Indiana, Floyd's Knobs and Newburgh all received a quarter of an inch of ice. Kentucky, and uh, Benton and Cadiz, a quarter of an inch or more. Benton got 0.38. Mississippi, all the way down there. Nesbitt, four miles northwest of there, three-tenths of an inch. Missouri, pressed in a quarter of an inch. St. Charles, 0.15 inches. Ohio, Struthers, a quarter of an inch. Oklahoma, Talahina, a half an inch. Hanobia, 0.38. Finley, a quarter of an inch. And same with Hugo. Texas, 
Texas, this is Texas got hit the hardest. It looks like Mason, Texas, three quarters of an inch of freezing rain. Eula, a quarter of an inch. Junction, a quarter of an inch. And then the other places are less than a quarter of an inch. Wichita Falls, a tenth of an inch. I'm just going to read this paragraph here. Additional freezing rain, sleet, and snow accumulations are expected across the southern plains, lower middle Mississippi Valley, and into the Ohio and Tennessee Valley through tonight, with a few additional inches of snow and a swath of impactful and potentially damaging freezing rain accumulations of a quarter of an inch to a half an inch or locally higher. Forecast just to the south of the snow axis. As the front continues to slowly track eastward, snow and ice potential will increase across the northern mid-Atlantic in northeast today and tonight before ending later tomorrow. Snow totals for the interior northeast are likely to exceed a foot, while freezing rain accumulations of over a tenth of an inch and locally exceeding a quarter of an inch should stretch from much of Pennsylvania and southern parts of New York and New England. The next storm summary will be issued by the Weather Prediction Center at 9 o'clock p.m. tonight. And that's what it is written over here. Uh, so we have... I I wonder if there is any city again that was in the bullseye for both systems. It doesn't seem like there is or there was. We'll find out more tomorrow. But despite the fact that there was no such city, we still managed to get some areas that got more than a foot of snow, even just from wave number one, as pointed out earlier. Well, it was in Illinois, Macomb. 14.5, 14.5, Lewiston, 14.4, Bluff Springs, 12.6, Peoria, 12 point, okay, 12.1. We mentioned all these things. I want to point out one other thing. This was brought up actually a couple of days ago, that for some areas, this is especially true in Indiana, the beginning part of the storm actually took place when temperatures were above freezing and grounds were also wet. Therefore, some of the snow, I think it was actually the St. Louis National Weather Service that pointed this out, some of the snow actually melted. By the time the storm totals were taken, some of that snow already melted. So even though you have... It's recorded officially in the book. Let's say for a place like South Bend, you have 10.3 inches. Okay. Uh, someone someone told me it looks more like 8 inches. So it could be that there was a couple inches that have melted through the process. I don't think in Chicago we had any of that. I think all of it, whatever was recorded, stayed. By the time the morning came already, temperatures were well below 32 and the snow was falling quite heavily. But when you go over into Indiana, those places where they were in the transition zone between rain and snow, and I think the amount of snow that is actually seen and what people are actually experiencing are a couple inches less than what the official totals are. Everybody, I wish you a great day. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. And... Enjoy the snow for those places that are getting it. And in regards to the ice, ice is a serious sakana. And people just uh, be careful. You know, people down south are more familiar with these ice storms than up here in Chicago. A lot of times the mid-Atlantic area gets these ice storms. I see that I've been talking for 18 minutes. And we haven't (laughs) just, we're done.